In the Olympic Games of Ancient Greece, a fighter could be elevated to demigod by the end of their life. There's no greater thing than standing victorious in the arena. A boxer born the son of a farmer could end his life as the descendant son of Zeus or Hercules by the time he died. The tales of their exploits were endlessly amplified by a rabid fan base who venerated their heroes with divine origin stories. Fighters grew into gods back then. Myths grow into all shapes and sizes with enough repetitions. We have different myths in the modern day. He closed distance in the blink of an eye and was off on an angle by the time your eyelids made it open. This kid is just so far superior skill-wise to anything I've seen in quite some time. He fought like the Flash with serious knockout power. If he sees one opening, he won't land one shot. He might land five, then move over and land five more. He was what happens when red line reflexes... Roy is too strong. And too fast also. Meet genius sleight of hand. He's half sniper, half street magician. He's the fastest middleweight of all time. Over 15 years, the world slowly learned Roy Jones Jr. couldn't be touched, stopped, moved, rocked, or shook. So let's look back at one of the most mythical and mystical fighters on film, the modern-day demigod, Roy Jones Jr. His victory eclipsing all others, quenching our thirst, fulfilling our hopes and dreams. Behold the man as he becomes legend! He seems to have it all, Jim. He has great hand speed, solid punching power, puts his punches together well, and has great confidence. But he's fighting a tall, experienced fighter, a good boxer, great lateral movement. It could be a problem. Against Percy Harris, Roy Jones moved like electricity. Bigger arena of exposure than has been the case before. He opens with a left hook by Jones, and Harris appeared never to see it coming. Percy Harris. Each moment of his fight felt like a gathering of electrons that got grounded in the jaws of his opponent. Percy got grounded too. Seldom few survived the first strike. When you have hands that fast, you can break all the rules, Gil. <laughs> Roy was blessed with the hands of Zeus. Roy hit him like lightning strikes a tree. The difference was, with Roy, lightning always struck more than once. Away from Harris. Another right cross. Harris in trouble again. Roy burned that man to a crisp. So time comes at the end of the fourth round. The winner by knockout victory, ladies and gentlemen, Roy Jones Jr. Thulani Malinga was notoriously tough and durable. He's been in with the best of the British heavyweights and held his own. Against Roy, his high guard defensive style left him a walking heavy bag for the demigod of Pensacola. Tonight, he has a different problem. The problem tonight is to look good against a fighter with a style it's almost impossible to look good against. That could be an opportunity Super for him. That is. Malinga was a 12-year veteran with 40 fights. Roy was the first to knock him out. Malinga fought six more years, including winning a rematch with Nigel Benn. Roy flooded through his defense and took him out in six one-sided rounds. For the first 17 years of Malinga's boxing career, Roy Jones was his only knockout loss. Knockdown of Malinga's recent career. You know, 
knockout victory. Bill undefeated. Now 23 and 0. Roy. Roy. Roy met the Pasmanian devil from Providence, Vinny Pazienza. I feel good. I want everybody to know that it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great night because I'm going to pull this off. I am going to win, and I feel great. I want you all to know that. People who see Roy Jones Jr. feel he's got too much speed, too much power, too much footwork for Vinny Pacienza. But one thing Vinny Pacienza says in his conviction that he will win this fight is that people underestimate his boxing skill. It was a matchup of two brash showboaters. It was inevitable that only one could back up their trash talk. While they are predominantly for... Oh, big left hook by Jones immediately. Wow, he came out blasting. A right hand gets there by Jones. So, so far, almost everything Jones has thrown has landed. He ends up feeling power. Huge right backs. Pazzi ends up. He's cut off the ring. He's landing everything. Pazienza kept it close for about two rounds. Pazienza's coming back. Is he landing? Jones was roughing tactics. They yelled to Tony Orlando to keep control. Pazienza on the attack. Gets the right hand in. And at the end, Pazienza, the 32 year old former. Good right by Pazienza. I'll tell you what, he's hitting Jones more early than James Tony did. Some of them block, but some are getting in. At the beginning of the third, Paz tries to get to Roy's body, but walks onto a counter hook. He tries to taunt Roy. Roy pays him back in fists. Paz didn't land a punch in round four. Vinny Pazienza threw five punches, landed none. Could have been more for effect rather than the distance that's tight Cut up. From there on, it was less of a fight and more of a hunt. Roy's uppercuts put a stop to the boasting. Roy's a good fighter. You know, I came in there, gave him all, you know, I just couldn't get it going tonight. He, he keep me, he kept me from, from uh, getting in my rhythm and getting it going on, you know? It's a good win for him. I got no excuses at all. As Roy looked to make the weight jump to 175, he tested the waters by taking a catchweight fight with Murky Sosa. Touch gloves, let's do it. Sosa wasted no time trying to go after the favored son of the gods. It's really fired up. Roy Zeus Jr. turned the tables on the aggressive fighter with beautiful footwork and counterpunching. In moments, Murky was on the ropes absorbing the lightning strikes that were Roy Jones's punches. With Spartan written across his trunks, Murky did his duty. That's what we had mentioned. This is some pace. Right. If this went on seven or eight rounds, I'd be curious to see how Jones responded. In fact, we all wanted to see how Jones was getting hurt. Yeah, I'll go seven or eight. Jones did what he was sent for. He even kissed his right hand before landing it at will. Murky gets dropped by a straight shot as he stepped in. He shelled up until the fight was stopped. In trouble as Ken Zimmer stops the fight. If the Sosa people, that fight should not have been stopped. He had taken hard punches, he was covering up, perhaps waiting for time. 
Bryant Brennan was another tough swarmer who tried to crowd Roy. Rules of the IBS, no matter what happens out here, respect each other, obey my commands, let's keep it strictly professional. Look at the races across the ring. But even through a hail of heavy fists. I did see this one too Do you remember who got it there? And there you see it. Left hook. Here we go. Roy was able to find Brian's liver. The body punch served as an off switch to Brian's advance and punished him like Prometheus for bringing the fire. A lot of punches, which not too many people can do against Jones, into the ropes by Brannon's rush. Since Roy knew he could hurt him to the body, he used the liver shot to set up another knockdown in the second when the hook came upstairs. Bryant was done. Only Roy knew it. The referee forced Roy to end it with a beautiful combination in two. Roy made the full jump to 175. While Roy looked sensational against smaller men, fans wondered how the demigod would do with yet another weight jump. Roy jumped into the deep end and never looked better. Jim, he has the kind of skills that will bring out either the least or the beast in Roy Jones, and that's what this fight is about. Virgil Hill was a champion who just lost his championship in a close decision. Virgil still looked strong when he fought Roy and showed up with a game plan. Early on, Roy had an issue with the body jab of the taller man. Waiting to see what Jones is going to do. And that jab is going to the body and to the chest. Has identified him as a, quote, champion in recess, whatever that means. So there is no official title at stake tonight as the two best known American light heavyweights get together face to face finally to see which one is the best. Roy's own jab made a rare appearance as Roy's more usual outlandish brand of athletic offense still played its role. Jab was all a setup. Just a few hours before fight time. When Roy faints, Bill's hands come up. He took that man's side like a friend in an argument. This was the only knockout loss in the first 16 years of Virgil Hill's career. The whole thing is, you fight a boxer and you box a fighter. He's a boxer, so I had to fight him. I don't go into Al Jab, I go in to beat him. He's a cold of Florida. He is Roy Jones Jr. Roy kept stopping the unstoppable as he evolved into his final form. Those who saw him in light heavyweight peak will never forget it. His performance against a much bigger, taller, left-handed opponent was straight off the pages of a comic book. Against Richard Hall, Roy produced an 11-round and one mixtape of fists and feet. City Batman if he fought head up and hands only. Body shot by 
Jones. Natural. I mean, it is so athletic, so much foot speed, and and with his hand speed to go with it, he just feels like he can get away with anything, George. He fought like Peter Parker after the radioactive spider. It went from a one-man show to a question of hearts. Richard Hall has guts. He could have been out of here four rounds ago and nobody would have criticized him or called him a quitter. He has taken a load from Jones and keeps on coming. Pretty ripped up. How about a towel? What do you think, Larry? It wouldn't hurt. Throw a towel. A towel wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? Sometimes a fighter is almost too great for his own good. But Richard Hall is showing us some serious bravery. Not a show but he's been clean. I like it. Popping and moving away. Why doesn't the referee stop him? What is the point? with Jim Lampley begging along with the rest of the world to put a stop to the visceral horror of Roy's onslaught. What in the world is the point? Wayne Kelly looking and looking, but he's taking these shots. Everybody but Richard Hall, the only man who begged for it to continue. So, uh, you know, Hall is a strong guy. You can't take nothing from him. A lot of people don't think that he deserved to beat up, but he lasts a lot longer than a lot of other opponents did. And, um, there was nothing to be taken like it by Hall. Hall was a good guy. Hall came to do his work, but it's just something about when I get in here, man, God takes over me. I just click. I just turn into something terrible, something tremendous. Half the time, I ain't sure what be going on. I just be fighting. You know? I be like, dang, what am I doing? I'm a fighting machine. I don't even have to think. That stuff just comes from nowhere. I be like, oh my goodness, did you see that? Did you see this? Did you see that? The last victim of the demigod of Florida was Australian contender Glenn Kelly. Speed, Roy, Roy couldn't miss the Aussie. He hurt him multiple times in round two. His constant leading with the left hook opened Kelly up for a leaping lead uppercut for a knockdown in round three. In round five, he faints Kelly and knocks, and Roy drops him on another liver shot. Because Jones has hurt him badly to the body. It looked like Roy could have beat Kelly with his hands behind his back. Because of the style of the opponent or whatever. They know they learned that on Saturday night. Again, once again, unimpressed. The undisputed, six and forty, pound for pound. Now, imagine no film of Roy ever existed, like no film existed in ancient times. It would be impossible to describe the in-ring style or exploits of the man without hitting the same group of words used to describe Achilles or Gilgamesh or Spider-Man for that matter. Roy Jones Jr. is a myth all right. One we are lucky enough to have on film for all of time to see.